We can often get stuck in the status quo of doing the same things over and over, and making changes can be difficult. Even thinking about making a large change can be exhausting. With big changes come emotions of fear and excitement that can often happen at the same time. Packing up, moving our stuff, and storing our home had us feeling this way through the whole process. Though it can be emotionally, mentally, and physically challenging at times, when faced with a big change like this, remember that the pain of regret for not making the change may be greater than all the work to actually make it happen. One of the obvious tasks that needs to be completed before we depart is packing the truck camper. And because of the obvious difference in size from our fifth wheel, this means downsizing. In the truck camper, we will have less space and weight carrying capacity. So not only will we have to be choosy with how many things we bring, but we will also have to consider the weight of those items. So we have five days until we can fully pack the new RV. We can't fully pack it because they need to install the furnace and water heater and they're going to be into some of the cabinets and ducting so they asked us not to pack the RV. Which is kind of stressful because we want to leave Thursday and they're wrapping up their installation on Wednesday which means that we have all of 24 hours to fully pack the Lance to hit our deadline. It's the weekend now, uh, we're not working with Lance or anybody. We really want to get a jump start on this, so we're going to do whatever we can to start getting ready to go. And we so what we've decided to do is do some test packing, make sure we figure out where things are going to go, uh, what fits where, what we're actually going to bring, and what we don't have room for. We've had some experience downsizing in the past. We moved from a house into our home on wheels now, but we've been in this for three and a half coming on four years and making a downsize again we've gotten so used to this home and this space and, and having everything that we need it's all the time gonna feel like downsizing from a home to an RV again. Yeah, but fortunately this is a temporary downsizing. Uh, the things in here we don't have to like purge and get rid of. Um, we can keep the things that we aren't bringing with us in here so there's not that emotional toll to think of but it's really going through and wondering what do we need? What do we need what for the next not, six to nine months? I don't want to forget for the climate and location but boy we need to get to it. In a truck camper setup, the truck is a big component to consider in the packing of the vehicle. Although unlike with our fifth wheel RV, we can't really use the bed of the truck for anything else other than the camper. We took some extra effort to make the back seat of the truck extremely usable. A critical piece to our strategy was getting a dog bridge. This is a platform that extends the back seat to the back of the front seats, covering the gap. This bridge allows us to fit the Dometic CFX cooler at one end of the back seat while leaving plenty of room for the dogs when we travel. It also allows us to more effectively use the space underneath the bridge and the seat for storage. This is where we chose to store our Viair air compressor, emergency roadside kit, toe straps, chains, some winter gear, and where Tom ended up putting his tools. So since we are limited in storage space in the truck camper itself, it was really nice to have this really big back seat to be able to store a lot of things and use basically as our garage. Uh, Tom's got his tools in there and we were able to put some not so frequently used items in there as additional storage space so we've completely utilized the space that we have available to us. So I'm the type of guy that if I don't have a substantial tool set, I feel lost. And this summer I'm gonna have to pare down quite a bit. We've made quite a mess here because we've been working with all of our tools. And I gotta pare this down. I think I'm only gonna have a little bit of the back seat of the truck. And this is gonna be a challenge for me. Downsizing the tool collection was very challenging for Tom. He felt as if he was giving up some control because tools for him are a means for solving problems. 
During this expedition, more than ever before, we will need to rely on ingenuity and others if we encounter mechanical problems along the way. Well, here it is. Uh, everything we're bringing tool-wise. I'm sure I have forgot a few things. I'll probably add a few as we get closer uh, to actually hitting the road. But we've narrowed it down to just hand tools and basic tools that should be able to get us uh, most of the way if we need to work on something. A couple power tools, a uh, drill, of course, ratchet set number of odds and ends that are good for affixing things and uh, a couple electrical things some saws and then over here is more um, aside from the tape road type things we've got a shovel we've got some ratchet straps some toe straps a jack a hatchet uh, a roadside repair kit these are like tire repair kits flares emergency type things the vire is a very important tool. This is a very, very uh, high volume compressor so that we can refill these big tires if we get a flat. Also fill up airbags in the back of the truck. And then just in case we get stuck, we're not gonna be doing a ton of off-roading or anything, but there's a possibility we might end up stuck and uh, something like this is gonna help us get out of the sand or mud or anything if we do end up in a pickle. In our fifth wheel, we have about a month's worth of clothes we can wear before we need to do laundry, and we clearly could not bring them all. We did laundry right before we packed so that we wouldn't come home in six months to any dirty laundry. Because space is limited and we are mostly going to be in a cooler climate, we picked only our favorites and focused on long sleeves and clothes good for layering. The Lance 1172 truck camper has a decent closet and a few storage cubbies in the bed area for non-hanging clothes. We got some packing cubes to help keep our clothes orderly and easy to tell apart in the condensed space. Shoes were also important and we selected our shoes based on functionality. Each of us packed a pair of sneakers, hiking boots, flip-flops, and Tiva sandals. We also packed our L.L. Bean slippers because cold feet when editing video is miserable. So Truma finished up their installation and we got the rig back on the truck and we got the truck back out here. So we are starting our packing process. I say we, but it's really mostly going to be me because Tom is sick in bed and um, I really want him to conserve his energy because the next few days are going to be kind of hectic uh, and the packing stuff is going to be pretty straightforward anyway. We did a lot of the planning ahead of time so I'm feeling pretty comfortable. It's just a matter of grunt work to get it over to the new camper. It would also be nice if it wasn't 90 degrees out right now, which is making the whole packing and moving stuff uh, a little bit interesting, but we're pressing on, we're so close, we're coming down to the wire and we're not gonna let Mother Nature stop us from getting packed up. Because it's just the two of us, we considerably downsized our dishware to only two of each dish type we need. Instead of heavy glasses and coffee mugs, we packed lightweight plastic Govino cups and stainless steel mugs, which work just as good for things other than wine and coffee. We also brought limited silverware, enough to get through about three meals before needing to wash. Pots, pans, and appliances were similar. We only brought our most used cookware for our most common meals. One of our favorite cooking appliances is the Instant Pot pressure cooker, and for this trip, we bought the smaller three-quart version instead of the massive eight-quart we have in our fifth wheel. The fridge and pantry space in the truck camper is also smaller than in our fifth wheel, so we spent several weeks leading up to our departure eating down our food supply. Packing our food was actually kind of difficult because even if the foods were non-perishable and we didn't want to bring them, we had to do something with them as the storage conditions in the RV might be less than ideal for food items. We are bringing the Dometic CFX electric cooler paired with their lithium ion battery pack in the truck that can act as a second fridge or freezer for us during this journey. We expect that this will be very handy for a number of situations, like traveling long distances between towns with good fresh produce selections, boondocking in remote areas for long periods of time, and catching fish and needing a place to store them for traveling back to the lower 48. Since we are bringing our two dogs along, we also needed to plan space for their beds, treats, toys, and food. One unique challenge we faced was the need to bring along most of our camera gear. For this trip, we are bringing multiple cameras, tripods, lighting, lenses, drones, battery chargers, computers, hard drives, and more. We dedicated the two main storage drawers under the dinette for the camera gear. 
Because this is not adequate for all of our gear and we are out of storage space otherwise, our solution was to get a few laundry baskets that we can keep gear in up on the bed during the day and easily move down to the seating area at night. These baskets store not only camera gear, but also some food and other commonly used items. Well, it's quite a job. Mm -hmm. It has thankfully cooled off though, and we're getting the last of the things from our RV into this one, and then it's just a matter of figuring out the best place for everything. Yeah. These last little pieces, the minutia, seem to be the uh, the hardest. Yeah, and like where are we gonna put the flashlights or the binoculars or? It's quite a mess of a process. <laughs> thankfully, you're feeling a little better. I am starting to feel better. The next day was our scheduled departure, so we got an early start on our final tasks before leaving. Because the truck camper was brand new, we needed to flush and fill the tanks. All right, so from the factory, Lance winterizes their entire system, so we need to flush it out and fill the tanks with fresh water. It's kind of neat, in this water compartment here, I found there's a whole bunch of space back here. And we decided to use one of these uh, flexible drinking water safe hoses that we can easily store in this compartment so it doesn't take up space anywhere else. We also needed to flush out our new primary inline water filter system, which includes a one micron sediment filter followed by a 0.5 micron carbon block. We filled the freshwater tank and ran the system until all the antifreeze was out of the lines and the water ran clear at the faucets. And it's finally turning clear. After peeling off the stickers and protective plastic, the truck camper was ready to go and it was on to the final tasks to prepare our fifth wheel for storage. Because we run a custom lithium ion battery system, it was critical that we ran the battery level down to 50%, balanced the cells, and disconnected the battery for storage. We also disconnected our solar panels from the charge controller so the electrical system would completely shut down. In our fifth wheel, we also use a composting toilet that had to be shut down. The toilet requires power to compost and without power in the RV, we had to empty the toilet and install a lid to stop the compost process. While we don't expect freezing temperatures while we are away, we winterized our Truma AquaGo water heater just to be safe, and because it is super easy to do with just the pull of a lever. We did one final cleaning of the RV and installed damper dehumidifiers in each room and storage compartment. We also made sure to shut off the propane at the bottles and to leave the refrigerator door propped open. Here we go. We're going to bring the slides in for the next six months. Oh my gosh, it is so weird to be in here and it being so empty. It's and... been four years that we've been in this thing as our home with all our stuff and this is the first time we've packaged it up like this. But the time has come. Let's bring these slides in and keep moving. After topping off the truck's fuel tank and adding a diesel stabilizer to help prevent fungus and algae growth, we hooked up and drove the RV to its storage location for the summer. To keep the desert sun off the RV and truck, we got covers for them. Covering the fifth wheel was a significant challenge and we were glad the winds were low as even the slightest gust made the job almost impossible. It was bittersweet seeing our home of nearly four years all wrapped up but we knew we had an amazing adventure ahead of us. Oh. Here we go! This is it, this is it. Finally. Ah! <laughs> we are all ready to go and... Uh... The pups are ready to go, right girls? Hey, ready to go? Yeah, we're ready to hit the road. We've got everything packed up. We've got the fifth wheel stored. We said all of our goodbyes to the folks here at Lance. And, and time to hit the road. Time to go. We're going north. Going north. Woo! 
It was late in the day, but we were finally on the road. Even though we were exhausted, turning onto the highway and pointing the compass north was an amazing feeling of excitement and relief. We drove a few hours north to one of our favorite camping spots in Alabama Hills near Lone Pine, California. We arrived after sunset and had to find a spot to set up in the dark. After the hectic previous week, this quiet desert spot was a perfect place to spend our first night on the road. As we fell asleep, the reality of the major changes we'd made started to settle in. We were excited for morning to reveal our new surroundings and to tackle the next stage of our journey.